Chapter 19, Civic Pride. We'd been learning about civic since the first grade. There was always a field trip to the fire station on Henry Street. We watched the same film about the firemen, policemen, and mayor who kept our community safe and orderly. The film's narrator reminded every boy, from Ellis Carter to the Jameses, the Anthonys, and every other pants wearer, that they too could grow up to be guardians of our community. We girls were reminded that we could look forward to becoming teachers, nurses, wives, and mothers. Poets were never mentioned. At the center, we had civic lessons. We were being taught our rights as citizens and how to protect those rights when dealing with the police. Sister Makumbu used the word policeman, while Crazy Kelvin, who filled in for Sister Pat, preferred to say the racist pig. He broke our rights down step by step, step, as if there was no time to lose. Any given day, a police car could stop my sisters and me on our way from Safeway Market and search our bags of groceries. We had to be armed with our rights. As the lesson went on, it seemed like all Crazy Kelvin wanted was to get us to call the police the pigs. He started with Hirohito. My man, Hirohito, who knocked down your door and arrested your father. Hirohito's face fell to the table. He looked worse than when Sister Makumbu asked him to revolve and spin around the sun. He picked out a flaky piece of skin on his thumb. Normally I'd think, ew, nasty boy, how disgusting. Instead, I felt sorry for him with Crazy Kelvin poking at him. Hirohito answered, the police. Crazy Kelvin said, the who? Hirohito said, the Oakland police. That wasn't good enough for Crazy Kelvin, whom we'd had to call Brother Kelvin, in, Brother Kelvin in the classroom. He looked like a bony, big beak chicken going, the who, the who? It was like the time he shouted, black girl, at my sisters and me while we were shouting back, colored girl. It didn't take sharp eyes to see Sister Makumba was annoyed with her helper as usual, St stepped in to, and put an end to it. Crazy Kelvin was supposed to talk to us about our rights. Hey, Tabor. Not to stay on there going, the who? The who? Big, big Crazy Kelvin wasn't done. He said, the pigs broke down the door of a Vietnam War hero's house. The pigs handcuffed him with a respect without respect for his rights as a citizen. The racist pigs then separated Brother Woods from his family because he dared speak the truth to the people. Hirohito tried to show no change in his face, but he was changing on the inside, where people could change when they're sad or angry. He looked directly at me and then looked away. I felt like I was supposed to say something to him, but I didn't know what. Sister Makumbu thanked Brother Kelvin for being our guest speaker and showed him to the door. Fern tugged the hem on my top. I don't like him. Surely don't. I glanced at Eunice Ink I glanced Eunice Inkton's way. I had just found out what she had meant when we were out by the water fountain. The hero that Hirohito's father was in prison for speaking out to the people. Hirohito's father was what Sister Makumbu called a freedom fighter and a political prisoner. Although now that I knew, I didn't find any satisfaction of it in having found out. Imagine to have your father sitting down, eating dinner, or shining his shoes while watching TV, to have your front door blown off its hinges and the police rush in, to see your father in handcuffs led away. Hirohito didn't have to imagine. He knew. It had, he, I had been scared once, truly scared for Papa. It happened two summers ago. Big Ma had come, gone back to Alabama ahead of us to visit family and take care of her house. We had packed up the wildcat and had driven down to Alabama so my sisters and I could stay there for the summer. We had been driving all day, all night, talking about talk about being a long way from home. If we needed to stop, we found a gas station or a nice colored family to open their home to us. As we drove deeper south, down dark highways and even darker back roads, I felt like Dorothy in The Wizard of Oz. I told myself, Delphine, we are no longer in Brooklyn. Papa had pulled the car off the road so we could catch a few hours of sleep. I remember Von Vanetta snoring on one side of me. Fern, with Miss Patty Cake, burrowed into my side. Somehow, I managed to find myself snoring with my sisters and Papa. Then, there had been a loud rap against the window. Balls of flashlight ghosts had flown all around the back and front seats, all over our faces. It had been a state policeman. Papa rolled down his window and had shown the poli state policeman his license, and he said he was driving, and said he was driving his girls down to see their grandma in Alabama. The state policeman hadn't offered directions. He hadn't called Papa Mr. Geither, sir, or citizen, like the helpful police officer in our Civic Pride film. I heard what that state policeman called Papa. I heard it all right. I held on to Fern, afraid for Papa, afraid Papa might talk or fight back. 
When we had arrived at Big Ma's, I'd expected that Pa would have told Big Ma about it, how we couldn't stop and pee anywhere we wanted to. How the state police had rapped on the window, what he'd call Papa, how Papa hadn't hauled back like Cassius Clay and socked the policeman's jaw into the next county. Papa couldn't, could tell us some stories. He speaks them so plain, you could believe every word. I knew Papa would have entertained Big Ma. When Big Ma asked, how'd the trip go? Pa had said, we made it down, sure enough. You know, Ma, same old, same old. 